Let's take it downstairs to Frank Salim. Thanks a lot, Norm. It's a wonderful night here in Ottawa to kick off the 2007 Mildred Williams Ladies Driving Series, which is the first of 37 stops for the lady drivers all across North America this year. And uh, it's a wonderful, extensive collection of lady drivers, uh, the likes of which really we've never seen before in series action. And as evidence of that, we have Tammy Lynn McKay here, all the way from Truro, Nova Scotia, right? <laughs> well, tell us a bit about yourself, uh, your history in harness racing, how much you've driven horses, and your history of being hands-on with the horses. I have been uh, around horses my entire lifetime. I've started driving when I turned 19. Uh, my father uh, races in the Maritimes and has won every major race in the Maritimes, including the Gold Cup and Saucer. And uh, that's quite fortunate if you're from the Maritimes. That's everyone's dream. And uh, probably not capable myself of doing it someday, but I'd like to. <laughs> well, he was lucky to have had such support in you. Yes, that's true. <laughs> now, you say you're uh, a school teacher by trade. Do you want to give a shout out to your school back in Truro? Hello to anybody from Truro watching. <laughs> and, and what uh, would your pu uh, pupils be watching, your students be watching this night? There would be a few of them watching, yes. What's the name of the school? Uh, Cobbacoot Educational Center in Truro. And uh, the series, we understand, uh, has had a major positive development this year. So going to be having some dates in Maritime Canada. You've got to be excited about that. Yes, it'll be nice. The end of August and early September, we'll have six uh, racetracks hosting the Mildred Williams Ladies Driving Series, and we're looking forward to that. Well, uh, we've got to ask you about your mount here in the third race upcoming. Uh, Au revoir Salsa, number two in the third race. But you say your uh, experience driving trotting horses is extremely limited to this point in your career? Yes, but I'm not scared, though. So. <laughs> I didn't come all the way from the Maritimes to take back, so put your money on me. <laughs> Drive on, girl. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Tammy. Really great to meet you. We're going to ask Ann Curran to step in here. Uh, the uh, Mildred Williams Ladies Driving Series, uh, really uh, the brainchild of Ann and Anna McLeod at Standard Red Canada, uh, to say that uh, you're pleased about uh, the expansion of the series is really a big understatement this year with 37 tracks across the continent already on site. Absolutely, and the addition of the uh, breast cancer, uh, we're having the Canadian Breast Cancer Foundation as our uh, fundraiser tonight, so anyone who wants the opportunity to donate money to the Canadian Breast Cancer Foundation for the Harness the Hope Fund, uh, we have donation forms upstairs with the uh, lady who's from the Canadian Breast Cancer Foundation in the Ottawa area and everybody who's already given money, thank you very much. Uh, uh, the big uh, news this year, twofold I suppose, the expansion into Maritime Canada, but also you're going to s literally storm across the New York State racetracks and uh, that area of the United States in the month of May. Tell us more about that. We're visiting uh, eight tracks uh, in seven days. We're going to uh, Vernon, Tioga, Monticello, Poconos, um, Freehold, Harrington, Delaware, Yonkers, the Meadowlands, and Saratoga. So everybody's really keen to have a whole week's worth of racing. Uh, we know you're well healed in harness racing, and in fact, I called on you for an interview uh, quote recently on the flak jacket issue. Monticello has made it mandatory. You say uh, you considered making the flak jackets mandatory for the ladies even before the series uh, started. Where does that thought in your mind or that initiative stand right now? I, I still think it's a very good idea, but I still think that we need to have some uh, regulations set up as to what flak jackets are appropriate. And I think that there is a flak jacket available in London now at uh, one harness shop, at Doug Wilson's harness shop that's uh, you know, probably something that a lot of the horse people should have a look at, and I'm definitely going to have a look at in the near future. Uh, Doug, if you're watching, and we'll be sending you an invoice uh, for that shout out there. Back to the uh, business of uh, the Mildred Williams uh, series. Uh, it's an enormous organizational undertaking. How have you done it? I've done it with a lot of passion, and I've enjoyed every minute of it, and it doesn't even seem like work. The, the idea really, you say, came from uh, some powder puff uh, derby races, which is a, a dreadful term, we don't use that term anymore, but there were races here at Rito Carlton in uh, the year 2000, and the idea came to you, it, it started to germinate in your mind at that time. That's right, in the year 2000, John McMahon hosted five uh, powder puff races that had five 
women. So we had 25 women here who were willing to try the gate because it was an all-lady race. And, and it gave me the idea that, uh, you know, people should start to promote ladies racing. It's a good product. It's interesting. It's exciting. It's entertaining. And it's definitely bettable. I think they're watching down at Yonkers tonight. Uh, tell us about your years there in the 80s. Well, in my claim to fame is in Yonkers, I took care of Bobo, and he set a world record for age trotting geldings on a half-mile track. So that's my, uh, my heartfelt moment for Yonkers. Well, uh, the uh, year well-traveled, the series is going to be well-traveled this year. What a wonderful development for uh, Canadian and North American women in harness racing. Thanks again, Anne, for all you've done. Thank you. That's Anne Curran. Tammy Lynn McKay, a real treat and pleasure to meet you and have you on board. Is Claire McDonald here yet, by the way? She was in en route from Manteca Nation, Nova Scotia. We hope she's going to make it here for her drive in the third race and in the sixth race. Uh, but stay tuned. The uh, second race post parade is coming up very shortly. Let's go back up to the press box level with your Rito Carlton track announcer, Norm Borg. Norm? Thank you very much.